Here, archaeologists and researchers around Jerusalem. They're shedding light on the state of public health some 2,500 years ago, mainly through the up-close examination of two ancient toilets. Yes, that's right, made from stone. This is The seat may not look comfortable by modern standards, but these were considered the lap of luxury back in the Iron Age. And samples of human excrement, to put it nicely, from the connected stone pits indicate that some people suffered from debilitating pathogens like giardia that cause dysentery. Now we're joined by Dr. Piers Mitchell, Department of Archaeology, University of Cambridge, and the co-editor of the International Journal of Osteoarchaeology. So thanks for being with us. Um, look, I know you had uh, your hand in this study, so thank, uh, good to get you on the program here. I understand that it was repeatedly found in tests, Giardia here. I mean, is this the earliest known evidence of, of, of Giardia? That's right. So uh, I work with some colleagues at the Israel Antiquities Authority in Tel Aviv University. And we studied samples that came from underneath the 7th century BC latrines. Uh, and they were from very wealthy, wealthy posh buildings <laughs> yes. uh, from, from the elite who, who lived just to the south of Jerusalem back then. Because uh, most people wouldn't have had a nice stone toilet seat like that. To no, use. no. Um, but it does allow us archaeologically to spot ancient toilets when we have, have a clear artifact like that. Um, and uh, we found the earliest evidence for Giardia, which is a kind of single cell protozoal parasite, uh, um, earliest evidence in the world. So it's really exciting. Um, and uh, Giardia would have caused dysentery, which gives abdominal pain, diarrhea, bloating, fever, and so on, and will kill a proportion of people that get it, especially children. Um, and then we went on to look at the early medical texts from, from the region because uh, the uh, texts from um, um, ancient Mesopotamia from the second century and the first, well, second and first millennium BC uh, actually write about uh, diarrhea and, uh, and dysentery. Uh, so we, now we can start to understand the actual organisms that uh, would have been written about by the medical practitioners in the uh, you know, first and second millennium BC because we now know which kind of organisms organisms were, were causing diarrhea back then. Look, I, I understand, you know, the sources are slim, you know, that our previous knowledge were about health during this period likely wasn't very deep. Is this considered a significant, you know, contribution to, to the understanding of how people lived, how people died? Absolutely. So we now know uh, more about the kind of organisms that we couldn't see just looking at microscopes. So before we knew which kind of intestinal worms people had in the in ancient Jerusalem and, and the Near East, but but we didn't know about these protozoal parasites because they don't survive so well as the eggs of intestinal worms. They're much more fragile. So using this biomolecular taste test, which uses antibodies unique for specific proteins produced by these ancient organisms, we can be really confident about what we're finding. And to be extra sure, I, I retested these samples three times at different points over a year to make sure we weren't making a mistake. There was no false positives. So to get that reliable, reproducible result is really reassuring. Uh, you know, to step away from the, the the core of the subject that we're that we're talking about here, the ancient latrines, and of course, you know, important findings. But look, look at Jerusalem. You know, as a, as a, the vibrant political and religious center that it was in this time period that we're talking about here during the Assyrian Empire, I believe, homed up to twenty five thousand people. Look, that's just one chapter of history in this city. Jerusalem in general. I mean, we look at it as do you as a researcher look at this as a treasure trove of undiscovered history still? Well, obviously. Certain towns have a much longer history than others. And it was the ancient Near East, which is where people first invented the idea of having a town, of settling, of farming. And so a lot of the first that we have in the world are actually found in, you know, in that region. And so if we can study cities that have been there for a very long time, such as Jerusalem, uh, and then look at well-identified well time periods and, and, and well-sealed context, then it really does help us to understand how people first started to live in towns and the problems that they had. And of course, sanitation was one of the big problems that you have when you develop a town until you invent sewers and soap and flushing toilets and all these things. How do you look after human waste? And you know, this kind of research allows us to look at the kind of diseases that would have affected people as a consequence of them not really understanding how important sanitation was and how ancient diseases were spread like this. Still such an issue worldwide today. Dr. Piers Mitchell, thanks for being with us on, on this finding from 2,500 years ago. Pleasure.